The young college educated young lady dates the non-college educated uh, fella. And so you say you guys was together for three years, you say it was toxic. When did it, when did the toxicity start? Um, it started... You had a daughter? Yes. Okay, she's deceased? Yeah. It was actually uh, December 31st of 2022, so... So about a year and change now. Yeah. Oh man. Right Sorry to hear about that. Yeah, right before New Year's. Was that with the guy that you're talking about? Yes. Okay. What happened? What's up, YouTube? The B-side is monetized. I really appreciate that. Go check it out right now if you haven't. Those videos are lit. And make sure you check me out on Instagram at Marcus the Interviewer. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got a young lady with us today. How you doing today, miss? All right. All right, all right. So are you homeless? Yes. Okay, and so how old are you? 22. 22. And so how long have you been homeless? Um, it's been like nine months. Nine months? So what was that happened nine months ago that caused you to become homeless? Uh, familial issues. You say family issues? Yes. Okay, what's going on? Um, my aunt, I was staying with my aunt and uh, things just didn't work out. We didn't see eye to eye on certain things um, as far as the way I was moving with life and she asked me to move out, I moved out. What about what whatever you had going on did she not like? Um, the way I was going about getting my life back together because I had previously lived in another city and it was taking me a minute to get a job um, because of my stubbornness at the time, just to be quite honest. I'm not looking to be a victim. I'm just looking to be honest. Um, so she asked me to move out at a point. Um, and, you know, for me, I just moved out. Okay, okay. Um, and so did she know that you didn't have anywhere to go when you moved out? Um, she was probably under the impression that I would go back to staying with my dad, but I definitely wasn't going to go and stay with any other family members because of um, the way they, they think, how their mind is. So I, I rather, for me, I would rather get it on my own anyways. I'm 22. I've stayed on my own before. I have no issue. You so know, you were life. saying out of town, do your dad and do your aunt, do they live here in the Atlanta area? They stay in Savannah. In Savannah? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, man. Hey man, shout out that Seapoke, man. Yeah. Shout out that Seapoke. Okay, so how did you get up here to Atlanta? Greyhound. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So you just took the Greyhound bus from Savannah to Atlanta just to be like homeless? Um, No, not to be homeless. I'm very optimistic and I know that I, I have a favor, a calling over my life. I know God has me just because of you know my relationship with him before I was in a... Um, a, a toxic relationship and I, I was able to build a relationship with God through that toxic relationship okay mm -hmm. how long ago was that that was until the end of 2022 so three years before that though so y'all was in a relationship for three years yes so you was um you like what like 18 19 19 mm -hmm. okay and so was that here or in Savannah that was here here yeah okay what was you doing here like what, what made you come up here at 19 um, matter of fact, I was in school, um, so you're right, 18 though, but I was I was in school at Georgia State. Wait, Georgia State? Like right up the street, right, Georgia State? Right up the street, <laughs> yep. Okay, hold on, so, so you was a student? Yep. Okay, and so you say that you ended up in a relationship. Um, was he also a student as well? He was not. <laughs> he was not? No. Okay, so, okay, so the typical kind of, the, the student, the, the young lady student dates the, what, how old was he? He was, uh... Like, like how much older is he, he was, than you? I was 18, he was 19. Okay, so he's right around the same age, so... Yeah. You know, the young lady, the, the young college-educated young lady dates the non-college-educated uh, fella. And so, you say you guys was together for three years, you say it was toxic. When did it, when did the toxicity start? Um, it started pro probably about, like, a year, barely even a year into it, actually. Um, and so what was going on? What was toxic about it? It was the fact that, um, for one, I think I, I had, uh, I didn't have enough boundaries, so there would be a lot of pro crossing boundaries. Um, Give me an example of a, a boundary cross that would occur. Everybody has pet peeves, and you know, it just shows how much someone respects you if they, you know, do those certain pet peeves. So it would be like, um, you know, I say, oh, I don't like something, and you know, he's like, uh, he doesn't, you know. He doesn't do it, so if you say like, hey, you know, I don't like when people leave the sock on the TV and he keeps leaving the sock on the TV. I get it. I get it. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, so um, do you have any kids? Um, I had a daughter who was deceased. You had a daughter? Yes. Okay, she's deceased? Yeah. Okay, um, how, how, much, how, how much long ago, how long ago was it that she passed? That was uh, 2023. So just uh, last fact, year? It was actually uh, December 31st of 2022, so. So about a year and change now. Yeah. Oh, man. Sorry right to hear new, about that. Yeah, right before New Year. Was that with the guy that you're talking about? Yes. Okay. What happened? Um, She had a gastrointestinal uh, disorder um, called MMIHS, uh, megacystis, and her large intestine was too small to pass anything along. So she had a colostomy bag. Um, she had to get TPN into her heart in order for her to have nutrients to survive. And she also had bladder issues, um, which led to kidney um, like failure. Um, so um, she, and she did not end up living long due to that. How long did she live? She lived for uh, eight months. Didn't make it to a year. Eight months. So. Ooh, like I say, really sorry to hear about that. Um, did that cause any type of turmoil in you guys' relationship? Like, was that some of the cause of any toxicity or anything like that? It was. Uh, it was already bad before, but that just caused things to get worse. Um, when it came to her care, uh, he wasn't really, like, active with that. Um, we actually ended up getting into, like, a, a big argument one night over that, which had some bad effects, um, just part of the reason why I just want like young girls to know like, hey, just focus on yourself. When elders say keep your, keep your, uh, you know, head in the books, keep your head in the books. Um, because I actually ended up going to jail. Um, Wait, what? I went to jail. Um, you went to jail? How did that happen? For false, false accusations really. Um, as far as what truly happened, he, he bent the truth. Um, he, he called the police. He's the one who called the police. But So wait, so you're saying that, you know, so y'all was, I guess, having an argument about who's going to, you know, him not taking care of the kids or whatever. Him not taking care of, of the of the child. Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying that that resulted in you ended up in jail? Yeah. Um, I was asking him to help me take care of, of her, and he was always very manipulative. Um, and he ended up calling my, my mother who had nothing to do with the issue at the time and um, you know we were basically standing in front of each other and I was asking him like why is he you know calling her especially because he never was in contact with her before so that really took me for a loop but um, he ended up pushing me and that that struck me especially you know when it comes to the care of my daughter her condition is very she's very fragile she was uh, classified as being terminally ill so she wasn't they said she wasn't gonna live long and it was just a lot of stress for the both of us but once he pushed me I just spazzed out blacked out type deal yeah yeah wow wow so. huh and you say he called your mom what's um you know what's the deal with your mom like what's you guys relationship like we never had a, a solid relationship um I always hoped that maybe we would and I did take the efforts into to doing that as far as you know uh, reaching out or even trying to uh, speak about so you say you and your mom don't have a solid relationship no okay so let's just let's just start from the beginning real quick so, so where are you from savannah you <laughs> okay man hey man shout out that 912 man shout out that cpo all day definitely shout out savannah man chatham county the whole county all right so um growing up in savannah did you have both mom and dad in the household i had a stepdad um and my stepdad worked a lot Okay, so it was mom and stepdad who you grew up with? Yes. Okay, was your biological dad, was he like active and present? Um, he wasn't in my life. I think it's partly due to his issues between, you know, him and my mom. Right. So. Okay, so he wasn't really there in your life a whole lot. Um, and so growing up, did, did you have like siblings in the household with you? Yeah, three, uh, three sisters. Three sisters? Where are you in the birth order? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, so the other three are still either home or just just recently left home type deal. No, they're still in the home. They're still in the home. Okay. So you know, growing up, would you say that you had like a fairly normal childhood? Um, actually, I I didn't. Um, we were a bit more sheltered, so we didn't get the the luxury of socializing with other kids. So that did stunt me a bit socially at a time. Um. So yeah, we. But it's nothing as far as like 
abuse really um but my mom was unfair and she has her ways um but it was never like you know crazy abuse she's just right unfair. no type of physical abuse nothing like that yeah. um i'm gonna go ahead and ask anything any type of like sexual abuse or anything ever happened to you no. okay it's so nothing like that so growing up i mean it sounds like you're just kind of a you know normal kid maybe just a little socially awkward right mm -hmm. um but it sounds like you made good grades and things like that i did yeah honor roll high honor, honor, roll. Roll. High <laughs> honor roll right so yeah. um and that was you know, i'm imagining you went to high school obviously graduated mm -hmm. um and made good enough grades to go to georgia state um, so it sounds like you had a you know decent enough childhood, um, and so it sounds like you got to Georgia State. How far into you being in college did you meet this guy? Was it like uh, first semester? Was it like first, first week? Yeah. Like first day? Like it was first <laughs> semester, um, and I believe it was like in uh, October. So the weather was still kind of warm a little bit, and um, you know it's October. It's your first year here, and you meet this guy, and so you know how was everything at first? Um, it actually was okay, and it seemed that he was more interested in me than I was him at first, um, which is crazy. It's, it's the love bombing stage. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what it was, uh, because about a few months down the line, uh, things kind of switched up, but we were with each other a lot. So, so y'all spend a lot of time with each other? Yeah. What Did you stay in school, or did you eventually drop out? Um, well, COVID ended up happening, and I withdrew from uh, school, so. Okay, so why? Because they still have online classes and things like that. <laughs> I was due for school for my own personal reasons. Uh, nothing to do with him, but like I said uh, earlier, when you're sheltered and you get a bit of uh, freedom, you know, that's when you really start to get to learn yourself. Like, that's the sense of liberation. Did you wild out or whatever? I didn't wild out per se. Like, definitely not wild out, but I definitely was able to discover a lot, of, a lot more things about myself. Like what? Um... The fact that I can be able to have fun, um, the fact that I uh, am more of a free thinker, um, to not think, uh, to not only think for what I was told, you know, think outside the box. I get it. I get it. Challenge your your uh, your foundation, you exactly. know. I get it. I get it. So okay. So okay. So eventually things went left um, with with you and him, um, and you know it sounds you know dramatically. You guys had a child um, and. You lost the baby. Um, you say that he called your mom, and that sounded like it was kind of triggering for you. Uh, why was that? Um, because my mom, we, like I said, we don't have a, a good relationship. We're not close at all. I'm not really close with any of my family members. Um, but also, like during the time that I was pregnant, me and my mom weren't speaking, so it kind of set things back even more. Especially. Why not? Why not? Why, weren't, why wasn't y'all speaking? Did she not agree with? I, the, I tried to talk to her about some things that happened you know when I was growing up or some issues that I had as far as you know my, my relationship with her and she told me flat out she said well good luck on your endeavors she didn't even uh, acknowledge what I said she what did you tell her it. what did you tell her um, I told her that I wasn't going to sweep things under the rug as far as what happened you know people just want you to, to, to look over what happened what they did and stuff but it don't work like that well what did happen um I wasn't my childhood was taken from me, so that set me back in the social world, in, in, in the world, period. Um, there was a lot of unfairness. Um, I was treated differently than my siblings. I always was treated differently. My family, they they basically saw me as a troubled child. Was, was let me ask this. The, as far as the biological dads, right, was your dad the only, like, um, your stepdad, was he the biological dad to the rest of your siblings? Or two of them. The, the okay, so two of y'all shared a, a dad, and then so the first two shared a dad, and the last two he was the dad. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, what's your relationship like with your stepdad? Um, we don't have one anymore, um, and that's for the simple fact that I'm older now, and I realize, like you know, growing up, I we, I call him my dad, and you know, I really I care for him, I love him, but now I'm older, and I have had the ability to have a relationship with my biological father. I just understand more that that's not my dad and he'll never fill that spot that my biological dad did. And I appreciate the things he's done, but it's kind of sick when women have their kids calling a man that's not their father their dad. They should, they should know who their real dad is regardless of if the dad is there or not. So, so you, know, you feel like your mom played a huge role in kind of uh, 
preventing you and your dad from having a, a solid relationship yes. and, and kind of perversing it by having you call the stepdad dad she didn't have me call him that that's that's eventually what ended up happening uh because he was with my stepdad and my mom were right. together for so long right are they still together divorced divorced okay okay so what's your relationship like with your mom now there is none there is none i don't plan on having any after that uh altercation with uh my ex-boyfriend after that happened well I, what does she do that has has you kind of pissed um, off or whatever she well when they were talking she basically instructed him on what to do in the circumstances as far as calling the police um and i'm being honest um I'm, i don't have no reason to, to lie to anybody these are things that I, I typically keep private but this is just for the sake of young women um and relationships with moms aren't always great but that's what ended up happening and i ended up seeing some messages as far as her uh trying to further get me in trouble with him after the fact um so that really let me know exactly how she feels about me so she was she was trying to get you put in jail like more or what she, like she was trying to have uh, defects called on me um even though she but she took sides she picked sides with him um even though she has been a single mother twice you can have a man in the house and still be a single mother um so it, it, it really threw me off and it just let me know like, hey, I might need, I do need to back away from her because it's not, it's foul, you know? Mm. Okay. Um, if your mom were to happen to come across this video on YouTube, what do you think her thoughts and her reactions are going to be? To label me as hard-headed or a, a troubled child or try to, you know, um, speak her point and, and make herself the victim of it. I don't have any reason to be a victim. I can acknowledge my wrongs and move on with life. I just, I just want to be able to tell my story, regardless of how other people feel. Because if I don't tell my narrative, they're gonna tell it for me, and I would rather that not happen. Mm. So, man, I mean, you know, so you had a child with this guy. When was the last time you guys spoke, you and him? The last time we spoke was. A little after her death um, when we were speaking about um, arrangements um, but before that we we were broken up right after the situation happened we were broken up but he had still continued to text me uh, things you know sometimes they do it oh I love you and we'll do all that type of stuff to no right. response because it's, it's foul you know I don't play like that so did did you guys get to have like a you know a service for the for the baby and everything else we, she ended up getting cremated. Cremated, okay. Did your family participate in that at all? My mom, uh, she, you know what? And this is something that kind of really been, uh, it's been irking me, to be honest, because uh, when my daughter died, I didn't expect for her to die. It was so sudden, because um, she had just gotten out of the, hosp the hospital. And um, we ended up going to Memorial, because um, she was having issues. I just noticed she was, uh, she was a lot more like sleepy um mm -hmm. that's not really her um so we took her to memorial and she ended up dying at the hospital by the time we got there she was still like right before we got there still moving and um i didn't have plans on calling my mom um because she she didn't come to see her like all, all those months my aunts were the first ones in the family to see her the first and only your mom never saw her no she only saw her when she was dead what and my biological dad too only saw her when, well he didn't even see her i called him and he was he was at work in the midst of things but um so it, your it, mom didn't come see her grandbaby no and she gonna make every excuse in the world for it but no she she didn't come down to see my aunts um i'm pretty sure they told her when they were coming I, if i remember if i recall they told me that and she didn't make her way down there um up here mm. to atlanta um but it, it was a lot of people in that room, and it kind of irks me because, um, you know, I would have rather been in there by myself. I went through everything by myself, everything. And then I have people, family members that didn't come see her at all and, and that I didn't speak to at all for, for a long time. And everybody's in the room surrounded by me, and it's just they, they looking at me, and you know. So it's like, it's, it's weird to me, you know, y'all watching me cry and stuff. Well, and I think that I think that it's important for them to be there. 
I do think that. Because here's the thing. I know that you feel the way you feel now, but looking back on it in hindsight, you're going to be happy that your family showed their support. Because that was the only way that they could show support at that point. Now, of course, I don't know if they were, you know, consoling you and kind of doing that type of stuff, right? And so, you know, obviously that would be what they should be doing as well. But um, I think it's important for people to show up in important moments. I think that I, in life you only have but so many of those moments. You do. It's just however it does. Um, it's, 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 I get it. I get, I get how you feel. Like, it's phony because they wasn't there. So it's like you wasn't here, so don't try to be here now. But honestly... They, they they should have been there and it was the right thing for them to be there and you'll you'll look back and i think you'll agree with me 20 years down the line well not when i don't have plans to uh, reconcile with any of them i, I know so the, let's talk about that real quick right and i get I, I get it i get how you feel okay and you have every right to feel the way you feel so i'm you know i'm saying that the, your feelings are valid um but you know we don't get to pick our family right and it's always the best option to see what we can do to reconcile things. Because life is short, and nobody's meant to live out here on their own, by themselves. That's a defense mechanism. That's something that you do to protect your feelings from being hurt in the future. But you got to be willing to drop, the, drop that wall down sometimes and allow yourself to be a little bit vulnerable because you don't get to redo this life. You don't get to reset. Okay, and things may not be ideal, but you have to find a way to try to, you know, the, the people who were put in your life as family, listen, trust me, <laughs> okay, I know <laughs> it can be a little bit like, I don't think I ever want to deal with this person again, but the truth is, is that, you know, you want to try to, you want to try your best. You want to, you want to walk away from the situation knowing you did everything you could to make it work. Okay, trust me when I tell you, you don't want people to die and stuff like that, and you never made it right. Um, see, that's the thing. See, when you try to extend the olive branch to people, and, and they don't, they don't take lightly to that, or don't aren't receptive at all. That's that's the issue. So I've tried with my mom numerous times. I'm done trying, especially with what she last did. That didn't sit right with me, and people have to know. What well, if I asked her, like, hey, why did you try to get her into further trouble? with that situation what what would she tell me because she was under the impression that i was bad mouthing her um as a mom uh, because i moved out with my dad when i was 17 um because of our issues i had gotten my first job and she didn't congratulate me or anything didn't take me to work barely took me to work i had to catch the bus myself i couldn't work past a certain time i wasn't really going to get paid and then mind you i'm in school still i'm not getting any hours i'm right. not getting any money but she took my card and would ask me for my card to go do things on her with her own purpose for the right card. right right it just doesn't make sense you know uh, i mean did, how old was she when she had you 19 okay 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 so she was fairly young she was fairly young so she was fairly young mom which means right now She's actually, <laughs> she's actually a year older than me. Yeah. <laughs> so me and your mom are pretty much the same age, okay? Um, so I get it. I get it. Growing up, she probably wasn't, you know, like I've got a 14-year-old. I can't imagine if my parenthood journey started eight years, you know, eight years ago, eight years prior, uh, before it did, you know? I was already a young dad, at, you know, when I did it, young enough anyway. Um, but still, you know, being 20 something is different than being in your late teens, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, I mean, can you give a little bit of, you know, credence to the idea that maybe she could get a, just a little bit of slack for the fact that she was, you know, still kind of young when she had you and, you know, may not have been as mature, maybe still isn't as mature, right? Yeah. So, no, yeah, I, I found peace within myself and I definitely give her leeway and I actually am grateful to have um you know had her I, I love her in the eyes of god however just because you love someone doesn't mean you necessarily like them and it's just because i've seen how she is as a person and i don't agree with that well i and i get it i get it so i'm not sitting here saying that that's not the case i get it sometimes people are just really toxic and they do really bad things and they don't deserve your energy so i agree that that could possibly be the case uh, but i will say this Mom, if you're watching, your daughter's out here, um, and you know you just said you love her, right? I do, but that doesn't mean that I'm. Well, gonna I'm go just back asking. To live with her. I get it. 
I'm, you said you love her. Yeah. Um, mom, let me ask you, do you think your mom loves you? Mm, uh, she probably does. I'm sure, right? I'm sure she does. Um, and so, you know, you guys both love each other. I'm hoping that this conversation could at least spark more conversations that eventually lead to some type of reconciliation. Okay, and I, I know that I you feel the way you feel. I've, I've had to heal myself. All, all the things that have taken place, all the unfair things, like it's, it's, it's severe for me. Like I understand, you know, outside of hearing it that you won't really understand, but for me to have had, to experience that and to build myself as a, a woman and go through a lot of things on my own, it, it makes you, I, I have a, a tough shell now. Like yeah, I I've get gotten it. that on my own and not from her. So, you know, I don't, hope to reconcile i found reconciliation within myself reconciliation isn't so much for her as for you because that's still your mom and the day that she you know anything may happen to her you're still going to be extremely sad about it that's your mom and i get it guys don't have a great relationship but trust me it's your mom you're going to be sad if something happens and so rather than having you know a, a, a relationship that you know maybe could have had some type of repair that's all I'm saying. I ain't saying it has to be best friends and this and that, but I'm some listen, trust me, these conversations sometimes they have more reach than what I know. Okay? And so hopefully and I also know that when people see their family member talking about this stuff in public on a public forum, they kind of they kind of have to address it from a little bit more of an objective standpoint. They can't be oh, oh, this is what it is, and it's just me and you, and so they could be however they want to be. Like, they kind of have to be a little more fair because they know other people are going to inject their opinions into it as well. Okay, so hopefully that's that's the result, right? But, well, listen, we really appreciate you. I'm Like I say, definitely sorry to hear about it. Um, you know, sorry to hear about your child and everything else. Um, we really appreciate you telling us our, uh, your story. If anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? Um, I was on social media, but I had to delete it for my own piece. Um, I have cash app, however. Um, my cash app is Jakayla, J-A-K-A-I-L-A 37. Um, and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jakayla Maxwell. J you got a YouTube channel? Yeah, I do. <laughs> what I mean, you it's, mean? No, it's no videos. What you, mean, just what you mean no videos? Not yet, not yet. See, y'all be having all the content. Y'all just let me get it. <laughs> Y'all just let me get in and scoop it all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you out here all the time, and, and you got so much content that you get just blogging your life or doing whatever, and y'all let me get it. You better, you better start it's coming, posting. It's coming along, yeah. It's coming See, along. See, people want things to be perfect. You got to learn to just post it, and then it'll, you'll evolve it as you go. Okay? All right. So, listen, like I say, really appreciate you. I um, definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, okay? Okay. All right. You make sure you have a good one, sweetie. You too. All right.